Hi, my name is Rich. I use the he him pronouns and you're watching my YouTube channel where I play amazing tabletop role playing games with friends. This is part of Star Wars Saturdays. It's an ongoing anthology campaign set in the galaxy far, far away of Star Wars, where every month I choose a different RPG system, hack it, reskin it, or just bring it straight in and group uh, a group of folks from the gauntlet gather together uh, and it's different people each month we create characters together sometimes we bring characters from previous game sessions uh, game systems all kinds of remixing bring those characters together and tell a story this month september 2022 my goodness we're so far into 2022 it blows my mind we are playing a game that is currently in beta playtesting from Golden Lasso Games. It is called Starscape. Starscape is a Power by the Apocalypse game where the shiny, the new shiny mechanic of it is about trust. And I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays in a Star Wars milieu. The inspirations or the types of media touchstones that Starscape's you Starscape uses are uh Farscape, Babylon 5, and Star Trek, which normally I don't mix my Star Trek with my Star Wars. I think Star Trek is a great media property. I enjoy it a lot, but it's telling different kinds of stories. Some might say more true science fiction stories, but I don't want to get into those kind of labels. I just want to say that we're going to be doing a little bit of Star Trek aspects in Star Wars. In that for Starscape to make sense with the setup of the playtest, it's a larger ship because each playbook adds a location to the ship. And there's a good deal of mechanics around NPC trust. So I think it's important to have NPCs. Therefore, this will not be a Millennium Falcon space opera style game. It will be a larger medium class freighter cruiser, something along those lines, a crew of a dozen or possibly more. We'll, we'll mostly do that by feel. Uh, there's also a rank system, which we've decided we're not going to stress about because I don't think the game really stresses about it either. Neither do the touchstones of the media. Uh, I, I jokingly said in Star Wars, if you have a lightsaber, you're a general. And by jokingly, I mean, it's literally pretty much all you see in Star Wars is everybody with a lightsaber is called a general in the in the uh, the prequels, the Clone Wars, all that stuff. So Frank, not a huge deal. Honorific. That said, folk, we talked a little bit about as, as characters have been created. Mostly uh, folks have ranks and the gist of our game for our setup is that the player characters are all crew on this medium class freighter larger ship among a number of others there is an npc who is the captain of the ship as per starscape's guidance and our pitch that everybody seems cool with is that in the post return of the jedi setting that we're at we're about a year after year year and a half after return of the jedi has ended the empire is falling but there is still an imperial remnant and the person in charge of that imperial remnant i've stolen from expanded universe or legends canon uh he's known as warlord zinge and zinge is uh you know an appropriate dick he, he was a grand moth during the time of palpatine who just decided to proclaim himself warlord of the empire. He said that, uh, you know, the, the murder of Emperor Palpatine was fake news or something. And he's just going to take over, you know, kind of like that. It's just, you know, he's just going to do the thing, commit an insurrection, you might say. Uh, and so Warlord Zinj sucks. And this game is taking place in what's known as Zinj's empire. It stretches all the way from parts of the core world to the outer rim uh, we even have a map which i stole from online we're starting at a place called straight spaceport trident vespa the idea though is that this ship ostensibly is just a merchant ship 
taking things to and fro within Zinja's empire, a fine of standing citizens who pay their taxes to the imperial taxes and follow all the imperial laws. But in actuality, the captain and several members of the crew are specifically targeting resupplies to rebellious areas within Zinja's empire, helping to keep the fire burning until uh, he is eventually taken down. So uh, that is all of the setup pitch that we have so far. We do have safety tools in place, or some could call them content tools. Uh, lines, which means a line on something is something we will not cross. It's a hard limit. We are not interested in that appearing in our story. Uh, we have we have one line. Uh, but we have a number of veils. Veils are things where we're okay if the content exists within the fiction. We don't want to shine a spotlight on it. So if uh, we hit a point of a veiled piece of content, we'll quickly cut away, do a star wide, fade to black, something along those lines. And then last but not least, we have the ask first, which means it's situational. Please approach it with caution and mention it to the play group out of character before you drop it into the fiction. I, for example, have, oh, I always put ask first on midichlorians because sometimes it's people's hashtag not my Star Wars. And that's cool if talking about midichlorians and the midichlorian count just harshes your vibe. We're not gonna, we will mention it. For some reason, M count doesn't bother you. Midichlorians, it's like, eh, it's like, oh, really? But okay. It was Lucas who came up with it. So I guess it's great. Anyway, we also have the X card, which means I didn't realize that this would bother me, but it is bothering me. I need full stop. You X card something. I may ask a question just so I understand what was X carded so that we can excise it from our play. But I will not challenge you. You don't have to defend yourself. You don't even have to explain yourself. That's not required to X card a thing. Uh, you X card something, we'll excise it from play, and then we'll find a way to move forward. And then always, uh, as part of the gauntlet community, of which we are all part of, we have the open door policy. You're grownups. If you've got something you've got to take care of outside of game and you need to be away for a while, go do the adult thing that you need to do. Or childish, other childish thing. I respect that. Uh, and if you can give me a heads up when you'll be back, great. If you can't or don't know, that's okay. We'll carry on without you. Uh, with all of that out of the way, let's go around the horn and have folks introduce themselves as people, and then we'll introduce our characters and work through that. So, uh, Jolene has a special invite to this game. Why don't you introduce yourself first, please? Hey, I'm Jolene. Uh, she, her. I'm. If you've watched any Star Wars Saturday that I've been in, I'm playing Janella Jantek. You should be shocked and surprised. I know. Uh, she's the hotshot pilot. Uh, you know, she's the Zeltron that always gets in over her head. <laughs> yes, I, I've started to think of, jo of uh, Janella as kind of our Mad Max of, <laughs> of the Star Wars Saturdays because you go through this crazy, incredible adventure and they end up dead broke and broken at the end. She's like a, a, a Jim Rockford. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, I, like, a, I like imagining oh, that. Like, well, okay, <laughs> I, I, I could dig that. Cool. Uh, other special invitee is Sherry. If you could introduce yourself. Hello, my name is uh, Sherry, and I use she her pronouns, and I am playing Maka Jin. Um, and yeah, we're not going to talk about them yet, right? Just uh, so, okay. No, just that's introducing you. you. Awesome. Yeah, that's all you need to know. Wow. There's so much more to know. There's so many layers to Sherry, really. But we shan't divulge into that too deeply. Next up is Will. Hi, uh, I'm Will. Pronouns he, him. Uh, unlike those of my character, Lishbeck Fenn, whose pronouns are she, her. And I have nothing to plug or anything else to say. My goodness. Last but not least, Andesh. Hello, I'm Andesh, uh, he, him. I'm playing Crash, the Trandosha, my the very first character I played on the Gauntlet. I love returning PCs. 
as you could look over at Jolene and know that that's true. Awesome. Uh, you now can kick us off if you want to talk us, tell us a little bit more about Crush, like uh, what playbook, uh, what is the character like? Yeah, so Crush is the warrior. Uh, he's a mercenary. Um, the game he was in previously was Hot Cartel, where he was uh, uh, working for the Hot Cartel as a hit from the ocean. Uh, basically, I um, think he's been like rolling around the galaxy a bit. Uh, after that, he's fallen in with uh, uh, with this crew. Don't think he's particularly devoted to like the rebel cause or anything, but he's getting paid, uh, and that's uh, that's good enough. Um, he's um, he likes fighting. And when he's, he's not fighting, he's kind of lazy, and uh, but also pretty relaxed for a trend ocean. He's not the, the uh, uh, crazy, uh, annoying kind of trend ocean, I guess, most of the time. Yeah, I think that's enough, unless there's anything specific you want me to bring up. I think that's a great and fine introduction to our warrior. Thank you so much, Andesh. Will, tell us a little bit more about Lish McFenn. Uh, so Lish McFenn is not a returning NPC, but she is an elevated NPC uh, who appeared in a previous uh, Bounty of the Week session and is a niece of a uh, Imperial uh, philanthropist medic called... Uh, Payton Fenn, who appears in our phenomenal Hook Cartel series, starring Rich and Andish right here. Um, but yeah, Lishbeck Fenn is, uh, is a quintessential rebel spy. Uh, she was an Imperial, she became a rebel, she stayed spying for the, on the Imperials for the rebels, and she was burned and spent many years uh, hiding out in the Outer Rim, uh, pursued by both Imperials and rebels. Uh, but she has recently cleared her name and rejoined the Rebellion. Uh, and so, you know, perhaps maybe the only one out of the entire crew who is a uh, believer in the cause. And for all I know, maybe the only member of the crew who is actually 100% aware of the mission, because perhaps everybody else works just for the ship, right? Like, uh, kind of imagine this Beck has been assigned as like the hand, you know, the sort of like the rebel operative, the handler, or to sort of like make contact with the rebel groups and make that kind of last handoff kind of thing. Exactly. I like that. I like that setup a lot. Sherry, tell us about your character. Uh, my character is not a returning character or a returning NPC. Yay, um, new stuff! <laughs> kind of. So, um, so I'm playing Maka Jin, and Maka Jin is probably a crew member, maybe an ensign, maybe like a junior, junior ensign, right? Um, something way low down. Um, I see them probably as having been assigned to kind of... Uh, make sure that the mission consultants uh, don't get us into too much trouble is sort of it. They are a new crew member. They are good at a few things like engineering, medicine, uh, operations, sort of doing all the things to figure out where they're going to end up eventually. Um, and essentially, I think that in truth, this is a, like a big change for them. They had a, a previous career as a professional athlete in Smashball, um, but they have switched over to this, hoping that that um, like a career in space will work out for them. So that's what I've got. Do you need to know anything else? Uh, it looks like you chose the tool oh, the, shed location. Oh, Is that yeah, right? yeah. Interesting. Cool. I like it. Uh, uh, I was just checking in because uh, folks we were still working out what locations exist on the ship uh, per the playbook customizations. Very cool. Thank you so much, Sherry. Uh, and now tell us a little bit about Janella. Uh, Janella, uh, I played her in 10 different Star Wars Saturday systems. Ten. That's not the amount of games, but like uh, she's a hotshot. So uh Last we saw her was in Swodu. Uh, since then, she's been arrested for working with some other smuggling group. And as for part of her early release program, she has uh, agreed to work on this undercover, you know, 
ruin Zinj's empire by uh, working on this ship. So I, I totally would like it to also be an in-character thing, but you can never pronounce Zinj <laughs> the same way consistently. <laughs> like yeah. that guy. <laughs> the guy. Zinj's? Yeah, there's definitely some uh, <laughs> that is amusing stuff. Cool. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. And now you can help us work out some relations. Uh, so down on, do do do. Dang it! Oh, rats, 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 rats. Where is it? Where is it? All the pieces. Row seventy-two. Of... Thank you, man. I I, I, I was past muted. It two I was little it like... different times. Crew relations. Row seventy-two. Do you have a relation you'd like to offer uh... up to the rest? Let's see. Um, I think that Cross doesn't buy my hot shock act. What truth do I fear they see? Uh, mm. That she's totally scared and over her head and dealing with a lot of shit that she is not prepared for. That seems fair. In over her head. Crazy. Okay. I mean, she's always talking about this force stuff. And swinging those laser swords around. Laser swords. She's a general. So does that mean I lower my trust? Good question. So uh, you think Cross doesn't buy your hotshot act. What truth do you fear they see? Minus one trust. And I think it's your fear, therefore, is minus one to your trust. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, you so give you... the plus or minus to the character listed in the blank. Oh, really? That's what the, pl- that's what the PDF says. Okay, cool. No, no, no. We're, we're play testing. Thank you very much. Sorry, I misread it. All right. Stop asking questions if you're look if you're able to. I, look, I had to look it up just to double check. I'm like, it's prob- <laughs> possibly written. So it's all good. So that means I don't trust you. You as did much, put it so. in the tooltip, Rich, as well. I did. Yeah, you're that good. You put it in the tooltip without ever. Uh... Oh, is that you the give the listed? Oh. Yep, that's what it says. Yeah. Man, if only I read my own tooltips. Okay. So minus one trust across. This feels about right. Trantosians. Sherry, now I will call you Maka Jin. Drop down to crew relations on row 72. Do you have one hey. of those you'd like to apply out to someone else? Yeah. So I think that we have um, uh, established that Lisbeth Fenn uh, uses the maintenance tunnels or essentially the maintenance tubes. So I have seen uh, Lisbeth Fenn do things I don't approve of, mainly stashing knives all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> I love that that the, the knife stashing is now canon. Okay. Is, is <laughs> so, um, and then apparently that gives them a minus one trust. I don't, yeah. So, yep, sorry. So, Man, so harsh. Why it you? is. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's keep things moving. Sorry, I'm moving, I'm moving pictures around. In the in the background, because that that's the thing I like doing make make the pictures bigger, and make me happy. Cool. Uh, let, let's keep moving. Lish Finn, you've got a relation to hand out. What do you want to attach? Um, I think that uh, I think that um. Maka Jin um, doesn't have as much experience as me, but they have a lot of talent. Uh, what did they do that first caught my eye? Uh, they found my vibro knife stash. Uh, and you know, um, an Imperial Inquisitor didn't find my vibro knife stash, which is how I was able to bury it in their neck and make my escape. Uh, so, you know, the fact that Maka Jin found it. That's pretty good. Uh, they gain plus one trust. Uh, God knows what's going to happen when they find uh, the explosive cache. 
<laughs> great great stuff okay so Jin, you go from a three to a four trust and now we land on crush the already un slightly untrusted one yeah uh, i was thinking since we have another player joining us from next session should we hold back some some uh, relationship bit or uh... yeah i think that would be a good idea so uh well but then it's like four players and if you all hold them back and he only has three we, so if you have one that you're not sure if it applies to anybody just feel free to hold it off hold it off and and you can save that for paul why don't we make ones. another one up uh i that so sounds like game design and hard so oh okay <laughs> maybe we'll do that all right we'll it seems like all of these, one is minus one trust, one is plus one trust, and one is a choice. Yep, that seems to be the way that they default work. Do you have any uh, correlations you'd like to offer up to? Yeah, um, I have one that is uh, someone knows about a shameful defeat from my past, and the one I think fit for this is Lishpeth. Since you're a, a rebel spy, you're like connected into uh, into things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely uh, heard about the crass. Um, you know, uh, having a uh, coming from Coruscant as well, and having spent some time on thirteen thirteen. Um, you know, maybe even aware of your uh, hook cartel uh, background to some extent. Yeah. Uh, possibly when she was just a teenager, and you were a uh, you know grizzled Trandoshan. Uh, thug uh, working for Amara Tavi. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe that's it because I uh, I think Crash kind of skipped out early on the uh, on the he he disappeared after they fought the the Corsac. Mm. Um, so maybe maybe that's the thing. Like he, uh, Word on thirteen thirteen is you turned. Minoc, right? Because you don't call them rats, you've got to call them Minox, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Cute. That's good. Uh, take another minus trust then. I think that's appropriate for a, uh, oh, right. a spy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, my sorry goodness. about that. Hey, no worries. Uh, whittle me down to zero trusts. You know me. I'm happy with I'm happy with everything bad for my play, my character. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, and then and this, we'll, we'll do snake order. So you can do your second one. We're going to do two relations uh, for now. And then next week, we'll suss out the third one. Ooh. Oops. What um, are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I, I accidentally did something. Um, yeah. I'm not sure which one of these would yeah, I think I want, uh, despite their lack of typing skills, and I think this is for Maka, was it Maka Jin or Maka Gin? Maka Jin. Uh, Maka Jin. Yeah. I think this is for Maka Jin. Despite their lack of typing skills, Maka has helped, out, helped the crew out of some dangerous situation. And then the question is if that has earned my respect or if I see it as a sign of weakness oh. to rely on this. Uh, this person. So, um, yeah, sorry. Sorry. you're a Trandoshan, so it's clear. Yeah, I think. Do Do you have an Do you have an idea for how how you could have helped us out? Um, that's kind of what I do. I just kind of show up at that right minute and make sure I provide the distraction, or um, you know. Um, turn something up to 11 on the dials or that kind of thing. That's just my thing. I just pop up. So you've noticed, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Crush is he's not an idiot. So I think he, he realizes that, this, that, that you're providing something valuable. So I think this is, I think this is earned by respect. Okay. I'll take you're it. not, I mean, you're, you're not a fighter by any means, by, by his view anyway. 
uh, but you do what is necessary and that uh, he, I, I think he respects. Nice. Uh, then back to Lish McFinn for your second crew relation. Um, not everyone knows the details of my past, but I decided to open up to, I think, uh, Janella with um, her checkered past, uh, you know. Uh, oh, you too, basically? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've worked for the uh, the rebels in the past as well, haven't you? And the thing, so um, the republic—they don't like when you call them rebels. Still, they get mad at me. Still, be rebels until uh, until the empire is gone. We're all, we're just rebels. Uh, or some other more inspirational thing. I can't come up with the top of my head, but yeah. Um, I suppose the question is: uh, so you know that. Um, I wonder if maybe even like you'd heard the name Lishbeck Fenn before, right? As like notorious um, rep spy who turned traitor and got her entire squad killed kind of thing. Uh, so like there's a dogged kind of rumor that, you know, because she was cleared of all those things, but for years, everyone in the Alliance thought that she was just Imperial, you know, rebel spy, actually Imperial spy, turned out to just be Triple a Triple agent, of, actually yeah, just not. That, actually just not, and it's a framed by the actual Triple agent. Um, but uh, after opening up all of that, did I like their reaction or not? What do you think that Janella's reaction would be? I mean, I'm like, look, stuff happens. You know, I, look, it's like, oh, okay. Are you like basically here to watch over me, or uh, how many people are here watching over me now? <laughs> oh, like, no, that's fine. Well. Like, yeah. okay. Yeah, <laughs> I think I didn't like your reaction. <laughs> all right. I think, I think I opened up the thought of like, and I left them all to die. And you were like, cool, but how does this reflect on me? <laughs> uh, I thought I was like, all right, well, I'm sorry you went through that. Okay. If that's how You're you not were, the only person that lost people. Jeez. Harsh. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing about you, Lishback. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not what I'm saying. It's about them. Oh. Oh no! It sounds <laughs> yeah. like it went badly. It went badly. Yes. Um, yep. Negative Janella, one. Got it. Negative one. Yeah, I think Janella is um, maybe uh, what's it? Too carefree a spirit or something for it to really like connect with uh, Liftback, who takes it all super <laughs> fucking seriously. Yeah. Like, like yeah. so, and honestly, she'd probably try to make it feel better, but it opened up poorly. So it's just like, nope, not dealing with this anymore. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't think it was ter like terrible. I think it just wasn't like, yeah. It was definitely a case of like, uh, <laughs> I was looking for deep waters and I found a shallow pool. <laughs> 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 nice, um, cool. cool. I, I I adore that that is a thing. Uh, Maka Jin, what is your second relation to offer up? So I'm kind of. I think it makes sense that I'm sort of fascinated by Janella's attitude towards authority. Like she's so flippy floppy and back and forth and like so incredibly self driven. Um, and it's like, do you think it's good for the crew morale or does it harm? And I think, I think because of her background in sports, in a theory, she's like, she knows it could be trouble um and then the other way it would be a test of the of the team i mean crew i mean team you know um so it's that thing of can you can you deal with the hot shot in the middle of things um how about like she was a hot shot when she was on the team and she recognizes some of her self in that mm. so i'll give her a plus one trust gives you an idea that she used to be very like i'm the best just got to deal with me okay uh and then we end up with second one for janella relationships could her be interesting because we got someone at five trust and someone at two trust which uh, but 
All right. I have two questions that could work for either or. I don't know. I think Lishbeck Fen is nearly as talented as I am. Could be even better with my guidance. Will I be their mentor or their rival? I think based off the previous thing, and they're like, uh, all right, flark off. I'm like, oh, okay. I see how it is. <laughs> see, I'd be more tempted to go with like mentor, right? Because uh, I don't think that Lishbeck would view you as like competitive you know Janelle, what i mean the mission Janelle is, more... is not very mentor like <laughs> no i know but maybe it's more along the lines of like um you know showing off within like kind of you know see that's how it's done sort of thing you know like you gotta have fun with it kind of thing like you know it's uh more no like lead by I'm, I'm still going with rival. rival okay yeah uh, it's i'll go down fun. to zero tristan yeah okay uh, a, a one-way rivalry for our lishbeck fan is just like what are you doing <laughs> Focus. Only go up. Okay. Everybody loves the the nobody. So. Oh, what, right what's then. your name again? Oh, <laughs> Ouch. Mocha again. <laughs> Goodness, don't don't be too harsh. She, Mocha well, Jin. She Locked. didn't choose somebody actually knows their name, so I can't know her name. <laughs> Right. Oh, oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. Yes, that's right. You, you, you were a Smash Ball star your whole play. Okay, cool, cool stuff. Now we get to do something really fun. We are going to, because the captain of the ship is an NPC, we are going to create the captain together. Uh, I am going to start uh with with you well i'm converting to using character names so janella and i'll i'll just screen share so it's easier and we're all looking at the same thing janella how does the captain look and you don't have to choose any of these uh if you have a different one but i th think these are pretty neat how does the captain look I'm muted. Disheveled, like an unkept bunk. All right. I mean, we're working in Shinji's empire. <laughs> All right. And uh, then Maka Jin, how does the captain sound? Hmm, sharp like the edge of a blade in an unkept bent bunk. Sounds sharp. He or she sounds sharp, but looks disheveled. Interesting. Lish McFinn, what's the captain's personality? Uh, I think they are focused like a laser beam. Sharp and focused. Yeah, just have more important things than um, uniform, dress, appearance, that kind of stuff. Uh, and Anish, uh, you can choose e either one of these, whichever one appeals to you more. What is the captain's training or where is the captain from? Um, I think training. Uh, I think life experience feels like what what fits with the uh, with interesting. The other All right, and then I will choose that they are. Hmm. I think this is interesting, a nomadic community that does a risky job. Space circus. No, circus, sorry. Uh, I, I think I'm gonna borrow a little bit from Mass Effect and I say that while immediately not remembering the species of uh, that was always in the encounter suits. Quarians. 
quarians. I love the idea of uh, the quarians being this like nomadic peoples that lost their planet. Uh, no, not an Alderani, because that's just like we've had so many Alderanis in uh, Star Trek, Star Wars Saturday. So I think I'm going to say that that she is from originally from Scarif. Yeah, the first planet that was blown up by the Death Star. Actually, and... nope. Sorry, could yeah. I change my answer to to military? Um, okay. I think that if that's okay with everyone, I think that fits better with like having the military hierarchy being part of it. If that's uh, or is that? Uh, yeah, I, I think that fits pretty well. What were you going to say, Will? I just wasn't sure we'd actually gone with the military hierarchy. I feel like we keep going back and forth on that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I. Well, let's... In fact, I would go so far as to say that no one seems to actually advocate for a military hierarchy, but we keep on discussing it as though we've got a question <laughs> about it. You know, like what... I have yet to hear anyone say we want to have a yeah. strict military well, hierarchy if... in the ship. What if that's his background and he tries to run things that way? but it isn't a military vessel. Does that make oh. any sense? Yeah, like, oh, that's interesting. are we undercover or not? That's the question. Yes. yes. I, I, okay. Because if so you're not is, undercover, you're fucked. Yeah. Basically. We're in enemy territory, you know? So we are on a military operation, even if, like, you are not aware of it, but, like, there are certain individuals that are aware of it. We're like... It's more like a CIA operation kind of thing, right? In that nobody here in the ship really is like part of an organized military, but we are using private individuals to accomplish a yeah, goal. We're of like a, a suicide empire. squad. Yeah, kind of. Like, yeah, without the bomb collars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I was the the thing that that I think uh, my my mind was was going towards without my uh, yeah uh, was that I, I think since most of us are not part that like don't have a military background it could be an interesting contrast to, to have a captain who does have that background i mean been a big galactic civil war just recently plenty of veterans and both sides and disgraced yeah. imperial officers and etc i mean could only help with the our thing right we chose an imperial the rebels chose a ex-imperial to be the uh Ooh. to be the sort of cat's paw for their thing the vessel because I mean, the Imperials might disrespect him, but at least they view him with some sort of respect. Then, you know. Uh, All right. Uh, Can I change a thing? What that would you make like it to uh, the the trust with Lishbeck and make try to say I'm a mentor instead of the rival. Sure. Yeah. I think that's an interesting challenge, and I'm glad you've taken it on. It'll be yeah, fun. it's like, no, no, this is how you should do it. And they're like, no. <laughs> what are you yes. talking? I'm, I'm, I outrank you. <laughs> do it with style if you're going to do it at all, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so just so we have it, because we've chosen a military person, if everyone could make a final decision on ranks. So Janela, uh, are you cool with Janela being a civilian? Oh yeah, like I think it plays with the 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 personal backstory question of like okay. yeah. Uh you know, I'm here because hey, get out of jail free. <laughs> and then Maka Jin, you mentioned Ensign early on in our, our pre-recording. Are you cool with Ensign? Do you want to go with yeah. crewman? Ensign? And I mean like training in training. So maybe crewman is crewman is more correct, but no maybes, which do you want? Uh, how about Ensign? I'm supposed to make sure things go right, so there's a lot of right. pressure on me. Yeah, you could be like fresh out of the academy, basically. Oh, uh, Maka Jin uses she, her pronouns. I think you have mm -hmm. that on your thing. Yeah, I'm just gonna put that out. Okay, cool. Uh, and then Lish McFinn, crewman or a civilian? Um, I, I think the cover is as a crewman. I think that makes sense to me. Yeah. Like newly newly joined, but strangely the captain doesn't seem to be giving any orders to them, um, you know. But to the rest of the crew, I definitely am like, yeah, signed on on Taris. Sup? Cool. 
Uh, and then I think uh, as the warrior, you start off as civilian. Are you okay with that, Andesh, for Krash? Yeah. As a, as a mercenary, I'm a civilian, which, <laughs> uh, but yeah, 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 I'm fine with, uh, with being civilian. Cool. By the way, if you search Star Wars and Captain, you will only find pictures of Captain Rex. Uh, and then eventually you will find a picture of Captain Phasma or two. Neither of which will be the picture of this I, Captain Ari. I, I've often looked up how the military ranks in Star Wars works. I have <laughs> two. It's just it, normal. <laughs> it's it's a little, yeah, it's a little stuff. It's crazy. I like it though. Because it doesn't, it's not really, it's Star Wars, but it's yeah, not it's Star not, Militaries. Like, yeah. So I don't care. It's fine. Cool. The bad guys are the ones with the ranks, right? Like as every loads of people discovered this year and they were like, wait, the Empire is supposed to be the US military? And they blew their mind. <laughs> Well, I think that Lisbeck's trust is up at two. Ah, uh, yes, because because uh, mm -hmm. you changed because math yes. works that way. Thank you very much for helping <laughs> us with that, Jerry. Appreciate you keeping us honest. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. Cool. Now uh, everything is ready for us to begin session, and guess what? There is a start of session move. Uh Yes. Rich, I have a question since we're something? play testing. Yeah. All right. Every time you move trust, you're supposed to move one of your conditions. Ooh, that is true. Should we do that with the backstory, like the relationship thing, or wait until we get into play? Let's see. Adjust Please. one condition each time you gain or lose trust. I think for the conditions to make since you start with two favorable and one detrimental at three. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see what happens if we do that, because I think we should be moving it. And thank you for asking that question. That was a good question to ask. Meaning, right. uh, Maka Jin, you should have two more favorable conditions. Yeah, that one's the easy one. Um, Janela, did you move up and then down? Um, I don't know. I don't. Well, I know you started at three. Uh, I moved down and then went up. Okay, so then you should have a detrimental and a favorable added on. Lishbik Finn, you so should be a two favorable, one detrimental, right? A total of. You always have three conditions. You always have three? Yeah. Three conditions are always marked. But I thought you had... Yeah, you move conditions. Oh, God. This is going to take a bit for me to grok. Okay. So then... Oh, I see. I see. I see. Then at five trusts, Maka Jin should have a total of three favorable and no detrimental? Yes. Okay. So then, yeah, two favorable, one detrimental for Janela, for Lishbik and Krosh. It should be two detrimental and one favorable, I think. Wow, I did not get that from my read of the rules. Thank it's you. in the book, yeah. Yeah, I really failed by not more thoroughly reading the Look, book. Look, there's a the, lot. The book in the basic moves and i thought oh. i had it but i did not cool thank you looks like everybody's caught up there start of session using the format of last time on each player will share this is a lot two or three things that happened to their character last session that's a lot so it can be one to three things, friends, if you're a little stuck for ideas. Um, we are going to begin the session on Spaceport Trident Vespa, just so I have like a central starting point uh, to get things going. But you'll quickly be getting a job and heading out. But yeah, that's where you'll start. So who's got a bright idea of giving us a last time on? 
is inspired. So since we didn't have a last session, this is just we make it up. Yeah. Then I think um, Crush got he got into a fight at a bar and he had to spend the uh, the night in um, uh, in jail basically. But they uh, they they captured Bailey Mom. They weren't going to press charges or anything. They he, he was drunk and, and uh, bothersome, so they locked him up. Nice. That that is appropriate. I'm looking for a disheveled captain. I may have one. I don't know. It's okay. Let's see what we think about. Uh, it's. I was thinking going human because Rebel Alliance has a lot of humans in command and also this is a person who was ex-imperial right so cat's paw does this pick work for folks for captain ari looks a little disheveled to me just a little mm -hmm. all right good deal that will be our captain ari and he bailed you out of prison the local prison now uh space fort trident vespa has its own security force but it also has an imperial presence. Did, were you in the brig at the spaceport, like the spaceport's who scow, or do you think that you actually were captured by some imperials? That would be two different ways you get out. One would be probably getting sprung. The other is you just paid the fees and you owe him. The spaceport, I think. Okay, good. We'll start with lower stakes. Sounds good to me. Uh, good. It, it's supposed to be like two to three, but I think that's several details. So we're good. What about Lishbeck? What what did we see last time on with Lishbeck? Uh, I think last time we see Lishbeck um, making a handover. Uh, you know, uh, delivering this. Uh, container of uh, blue milk, right to um, to some vendors on the uh, the street, and then uh, opening up one of them and plunging a hand inside, and then removing the false bottom and uh, pulling out a thermal detonator and handing it to the uh, to the sort of uh, rebel cell that they're trading with. That's great. I like that. And so there's a rebel cell on Spaceport Trident Vespa that you hand to this? Like, do, can we tell if this is Spaceport Trident Vespa where this happens? Sure. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's definitely uh, Spaceport Trident Vespa. Perhaps it's even a, another, um, you know, mule, basically, who will take that somewhere else, kind of like spread it across. All right. And then give me one more detail. What species do you imagine this uh, individual is? And you can grab any of the NPCs from Spaceport folks if you want. A oh, Rodian? okay. Yeah. I'll use, a, I'll use one of the NPCs, I think. Well, there's, um, some, there's a few Rodians there, too. A couple of them. Uh, I think maybe who's the most interesting to be? Um, oh God, I forget whatever sense Stegger gives is terrifying with his massive teeth face. Yes, terrifying. Yeah. Um, I actually think it's uh, it's Red, the uh, leader of the cricket gang on Spaceport Trident Vespa. <gasps> I've, given the, I've given these thermal detonators to. Um, I think they're not, uh, you know, true believers, but uh, this is Zinj's territory and anybody who can cause who aims to misbehave in Zinj's territory is um, is good. Excellent. That's great. Uh, see some stuff from um... From chat, let's, let's talk this out. It looks like I made a mistake in moving things around. It's my fault because, it's okay. look, things aren't laid out well. Yeah. Uh, conditions don't change during character creation, apparently. They change so. once you hit play. Yeah. So everyone should have two positive, one negative. All right. There we go. 
Okay. Thank you for the um, the wonderful last time on. That is great. What is the last time on for Maka Jin? I think there's there's a scene of of um, essentially you could see in the background Lisbeth Fenn doing the handoff uh, with um, with Red, <clears throat> and in the foreground is Maka Jin uh, asking the Imperial guards that are standing nearby for directions to some place, like, like incessant stupid questions um, to keep their attention. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> this is sort of flip, and you see Cross like is being hauled away. And uh, you see Maka Jin uh, sort of turn around and she's talking to, oh, I did his name right. Um, she is talking to uh, Commander Argyle, who just happens to be like standing out there at the rest. And she's going, I really don't think this merits the Imperial Queen. Just, Spaceport will get him out of here as soon as possible. So sorry that our crew member did this. You know, essentially talk to him, and then he recognizes her, and she's like all flustered. And everything. That's right. So, he, he would recognize her. Yeah, That's perfect. Exactly. Uh, yes, Commander Argal is reasonable about this, as long as you keep the Trent Ocean out of any future trouble. I know they have a bad reputation and usually he's pretty, pretty sedate. I'll make a note of that. Uh, then what about for Krosh? What's our last time on with Krosh? You think we should be to Janela, right? Should it be? We already started with Krosh because you were in jail. Sorry, I got swung around in my directions. Uh, about Janela was our last time on. Yeah, sorry, I was doing a lot of stuff. I think last time, you know, she's gotten another one of those space roller derby, spacer derby games. Uh, Rocket skate. Yeah. Rocket skate think, arena. And uh, what jail did Cross end up in? Spaceport. Oh, Spaceport, not Imperials? Okay. Correct. Uh, then, yeah, and then Chanella and the the derbies, uh, I, I, the star jammers, I guess, we'll go with that. That's not sure. copywritten at all. Uh, totally got in a brawl with some Imperials, but you know, we did not get detained. So, because we right. won, because you won, yeah, cool. All right, now, uh, in our NPC captain mechanics, uh, the way that it rec recommends things take place is uh, touchstone for Star Trek Next Gen, where the captain talks to people. Uh, meets with the crew and talks over a situation. We we may or may not do that. We probably won't do that every single time. Uh, but we'll begin at the last time on of Captain Ari, our captain who sounds sharp like the edge of a blade, who is focused like a la laser beam, military trained, ex-imperial, who looks a bit disheveled like an unkept bunk picking you up out of the huskal out of the spaceport jail crash why did you have to start that fight crash uh, i'm not the one who started oh, okay it was me who started it it was uh there were, I don't know, I was bored. I'll make a note for other things to keep you busy then. Come on, we have a job. You're in arrears to me, by the way, until you pay back the fee. Ah, uh, come on. Just, uh, just a little dust up. It's, uh, on the job training. Well, I don't think you broke a sweat. 
So if you get a B from the three Rhodians who beat up, then you can use that to pay off your what you owe me. And he turns and crisply starts to walk out of the narrow walkway between the different jails. I'm imagining it's that like uh, completely see-through jail that we've seen a couple times on Clone Wars, which is like you know force shield type deal. You walk out with him, and Maka Jin is there. You've resolved the signing off the data pad to make sure that crush is released under your recognizance um the captain is headed towards now the hardest part of all star wars games the name of our ship oh everyone looks it's painful uh, we know that she's a medium class freighter we could go with the uh I don't dancing know. Sarlacc. The what? The dancing Sarlacc. Oh, that sounds pretty great. I'm into that. Is it two A's in a C? I think so. Uh, S A R L A C C. Two C's. Dang it. I knew it was two A's or two C's. Okay. The dancing Sarlacc. And uh, yeah, let's. Let's pick up a scene with Janella. Uh, you've received a come from the captain informing you that you guys have a job, asking you to get back to the ship. Uh, Janella was was she on ship? Are you heading uh, back? No, she definitely was not on ship at the time. Uh, but yeah, you know, she gets groggily woken up from whatever long night fun fights no problems so what's no. the worry oh 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 we gotta go oh, okay yeah i'll be there shortly it's cool. just like going through grabbing so, oh shit i think this is mine all right let's go uh see y'all next time i'm in port and like they're probably like, oh, passed out or groggy as themselves. Nice, some kind of big party that you, yeah, into that and passed out around. Yeah, you know, we like kicked in a couple of stormtrooper helmets. It was great. Interesting. Okay, cool. And then what about Lishbik Finn? We know what happened last time on, but when you received the same com from Captain Ari. Informing you, you guys have a job. Make it to the to uh, the Sarlacc. He'd probably just call it the Sarlacc. Where do we see you? Um, I think we see her uh, with a you know a thermal detonator like in pieces across the table, right? Uh, and like red and a few of the Reese crickets like standing over, kind of like all looking, kind of like poking things in her hand. She snaps out and grabs hold of Red's hand before it picks up like a vial of, um, you know, glowing fluid. Uh, and without like breaking, she's still on the comm link without looking. Uh, and she just very, 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 very slowly lowers it down to the table, just shakes her head and says, I'll be with you in one second. I'll be with you shortly, Captain. Uh, and then, you know, listen, you don't use these until we leave. And when you get caught with them, where did you find them? The cartel sold them to you. Cartel or Pike Syndicate, you know, yeah. one of them. One of them, yeah. <sighs> May the force be with you. And you're going to need it. Right, exactly. Whatever. Yeah, she, she watches leaves. you. Yeah. Yeah, I, like I think it. like opens a side door, you know, pulls up the cloak, the classic spy cloak of Star Wars, uh, and then rejoins the sort of bustle of uh, the spaceport heading back towards the Sarlacc. Uh, and in the background, uh, you hear uh, a loud crash and, uh, hey, she said not to drop those. <laughs> <laughs> that seems appropriate. Yeah, Red would 
Red would freak out. So, quick star wipe. The four of you are gathered together. Now, uh, one of the things I like about Starscape is for the starship, there are there's this huge set of selections for sections on the ship. And once we name one, we'll check that box so that we know that there is such a thing. I I feel Ready Room feels too Star Trek. Like there's too much Star Trek in Ready Room for me. So I'm gonna um I'm gonna actually remove that one if everybody's okay. No one has any objections, feels so where is it that your captain, if he tells people what's going on, do you think he uh just does a stand up in the crew quarters? Uh do you guys maybe meet at the galley? Mm. So uh, I'd say galley. So we could probably remove mess hall because we probably just eat in the galley. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I like that. Yeah, we're not on like a massive cruiser. No, no. you are not on uh, one that's so large that you would need. So we'll just take out mess hall. Thank you very much. I like we just take engineering because we've already got that as the space for two of us, right? The tool shed Perfect. and the uh, maintenance tube. So we know that there's an engineering section. Of the Definitely. Ship. Nice size. Are we going to go with just like a general look of the uh, the YV666 that was um, shared earlier? Are we cool with that or do basically big, red, tall, tall thing? It's almost narrow, more narrow than it is tall for sure. Uh, but... Yeah, I, I, I suggested it just because it looks cool, but it's also really weird. I, I don't know how it works with the, with that really. Like, there are a bunch of like, sh turbo shafts or like, yeah, I don't know. We'll figure we'll figure that out. Yeah, we'll we'll leave it. Uh, we'll drop in post production like the matte painting of the exterior of the ship later. For now, we just know that. It, She's big, that the Sarlacc is a big ship. And we pick up in the engineering, not far from the maintenance tubes. Uh, and the captain says, all right, crew, uh, this one should be a pretty simple job. We're taking a few passengers on. We'll be traveling to Junction. Uh, Junction is a rather uh, it's pretty, pretty heavy Imperial presence. So we will need to be smart. And he looks at you, Crosh. Uh, Junction and the people of Della Luna have been at war for centuries but made peace just before the clone wars now they have sanding packs it's lasted about 33 years but uh, we'll be delivering these passengers to station 88 spaceport any questions don't start any fights with the passengers if they give you any trouble you will talk to me Sure, sure. Probably best not to fraternize with him either, Janella. Not too much. I can't promise anything like that. <sighs> he was just like me. It's true. Fraternize your way straight into that jail cell. Uh, who, are, who will our passengers be, Captain? Uh, they're coming along here, chirp, and he says, let me introduce you to them, and he'll take a step away. So this is where I want to check in with you guys. Uh, I was imagining that perhaps they are, this is uh, probably more talking to Will than, <laughs> because I, maybe I just was, you were in 
I think it is that uh, the Loth Wolves, if you remember that team from the hyperspace I game. I love the Loth Wolves because they are like the A team, basically, you know, without being burned by very for crimes they didn't commit. They are just like the special forces group who've been battling their way across the news empire for years now, it feels. Yes. They, they have been in deep and they have had a lot of interesting in- all right cool thank you for being cool with that I will go ahead and so uh, as the captain heads to again map painting of the the gangplank uh, the landing ramp or the the ramp that you would come off i'm thinking something similar to millennium falcon and that it lowers down and people walk aboard you see that there is a a red-skinned humanoid a gatal a goat person for lack of a better person a radataki and uh there's a fairly attractive human woman uh, among with them they are dressed in the traditional hey i'm a jedi but i'm undercover uh cloaks and they're carrying a lot of gear and captain ari uh shakes hands with the red-skinned individual this is lek lekuren uh this is Mish McFinn. Janela Gentech, Crush, and one of our ensigns. Sorry, I'm not supposed to know your name. So Rich is saying he's not supposed to know your name. So he, I think he knows, but he doesn't. Uh, Lek is, has a cybernetic eye. His left eye has been replaced. It's not garish. Like it's relatively subtle. It's uh, except for the shining red light, but it's it's not like. You know, the casing around his eye has been taken out. And Lex looks across the crew of you. Nice to meet you. We'll stay out of your hair. You guys do what you do. We don't expect any um, imperial entanglements. Do we ever expect them? We Let's avoid them. them. Yes. Uh, nod to the Loth Wolves, whose reputation precedes them, their heroic actions on Whisper Base. Indeed. Cool. So, uh, soon we go to the establishing shot of the ship taking off, and uh, you guys fall into your normal duties. So, what is, what is, uh, when we start off, what is Maka Jin? What's the project you're currently working on in the ship? We can see that she has just replaced like a um, one of the uh, installations that's on the backup engine. Like she's put like the sort of replacement part in. She's taken the original thing and she's she's taking it apart piece by piece. And you see her pick up the solvent and start to clean it like she's taking a piece of the engine off and she's cleaning it. She's going to put it back together and then put it back in when they get another thing. Just that kind of sort of constant maintenance, doing the thing that you have to do to keep the ships running perfectly. Did she design these, this routine of, of maintenance herself or was she uh, trained she on it? She read about it. And so she asked permission to begin and uh, pinpointed the parts that needed it the most. And this is like, she's on step three of 152. Oh, wow. Okay. Cool. I've dropped into the NPCs, the four folks who were introduced. Uh, of course, they none of them use their ranks while uh, <laughs> being introduced. Uh, Krosh, why is it that you're in engineering 
while Makajin is working on all of this maintenance? Uh, for two reasons. Uh, one is that Maka sometimes needs help with some heavy lifting. Like there's there's big engine parts and uh, I can help her with that. Uh, but mostly it's because the captain wouldn't think to look up, look for me there. So it's it's a good place to to uh, stay stay lay low basically. What is it that the captain often asks you to do that you would avoid? Mm, um, is it like your manual labor? Is it menial, boring stuff? What are you What are you avoiding? I think I think I'm supposed to like run drills with with some of the um, some of the people who on the ship who are supposed to be able to fight, um, and I just find it pointless. Either they know what they're doing or they don't. And uh, so, yeah, I think you that's part like of, of why they hired me to to like uh, train train up some of the some some of the crew to be better fighters. And you duck that one thing that you were hired for that you actually happen to be good at. That's that's very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Maka, do you just ignore when Crush normally comes in to hide out, even though you know he has a, you know, there's a duty roster, he has assignments, he's supposed so, to be showing you how to fight better? Yeah, um, and one of the things is, is Crush knows that um, the reason I don't fight very well is because I have a set of injuries that really cut down on my mobility. It's like I have the the instincts and the timing and all of that stuff, but I just can't, um, just don't have the strength that I can uh, sort of push through my limbs like I used to. Just uh, too many, too many torn ligaments and things like that that haven't healed up quite right. Um, just because we were a little backwater. So um, I do all the exercises I'm supposed to, but the thing about Cross, you have to understand is he's a big guy and you think traditions would be like he would always be aware of them but actually when they sit still they get very still and they kind of they're just like it's easy to forget they're there and I think there's a thing of at first she chats to him and he, he doesn't really respond and then she's just like gets to where she's concentrating on what she's doing and she forgets he's there <laughs> You're forgotten. You're ignominious. Cool. Uh, let's cut to Lishbik as we see the two of you, one working hard, the other avoiding working entirely. Lishbik, Finn, um, where are you on? I'm sorry. I, I was going to say, I think I've been uh, ostensibly given the task of uh, doing what uh, Crass is meant to be doing is not you know not so like what makajin is an ensign working on it right and i'm part of the crew right so they asked to give me some duties to do and typically i just sort of stand by while makajin does all the hard work uh and i just go yeah good job kid uh, <laughs> and look disinterested and smoke a low stick or something right um but then i think i'll come into the i'll be heading down to help them in engineering uh and find that crass is already there doing my job uh, and not doing theirs, if that's if that works, unless you had a that coffee. sounds awesome. I yeah. like that. Uh, and I think it's uh, walk in uh, and you know go like, uh, "Hey, Jin, uh, Captain's signed me to help you out." Uh, and uh, I just like look past, right past Crass, sitting very like still in the corner, uh, and then maybe Maka says like, "Oh, Crass is already helping me out," and I'm like. <laughs> spit take <laughs> like as he move, as he blinks uh all right wait aren't you supposed to be doing drills with the with the crew are you supposed to um i don't think so no i'm 
pretty sure you're supposed to be training up the security detail of the captain. I do for. Uh, is that today? I thought that was tomorrow. I thought that was every day, Crass. Uh, uh. There's a bunch of civvies up there holding blasters and stun sticks in the cargo, in cargo bay two, needing a leader. <sighs> yeah, yeah, um, okay. I guess I'll, I'll go yell at them for a bit. Uh, I'm trying to move my way towards uh, being concerned about my crewmate Crass's uh, lack of motivation um, and thirst for the hunt. Being so much of a, uh, you know, what's it called? You know, like when cold blooded creatures are lethargic uh, in the heat, kind of in the, so, you know, that Crass is maybe too sedentary, too lethargic. Will I be able to rely on him in, when the shit hits, when the poodoo hits the fan? Um, and I think I'm going to tell them what I think they need to hear, which is, uh, you know, that you are a, a hunter and the hunter must remain sharp and you have to teach uh, other new hunters how to do it. Because these people, these people don't have teeth or claws, crass. They didn't grow up in a hunting culture. They need you to show them just like you were shown by your broodmates, you know, otherwise they may as well just be prey torn apart. I won't see that happen again, goddammit. Cocking cock it. <laughs> it sounds like you're trying to connect with yes, Crash. Entirely, here. yes. Wonderful. When you're concerned about a crewmate and tell them what you think they need to hear, roll plus their favorable conditions. So, how many favorable conditions? Two, I believe, right? Favorable, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I'll just add two dice to the thing. That is 10, 10 plus. Uh, so you hear me, uh, I earn one plus trust. Um, there is no difference between any kinds of hits. You take one plus trust if you accept what I say, or you mark experience if you spit on my uh, thing and go find another place in the ship to hide out, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, I I think I I think I I, I hear you. Um, I'm going to. I, I I mean, what what Crash says is, uh, it, if they can't fight by now, it's it's too late. They're they're too old to learn. But yeah, I guess I'll I'll give it a go. So well, he 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 does accept it. He just doesn't uh, express it. But yeah, yeah. Well. Uh... I knew, you were I knew you were at least a professional, Crass. Uh, that's certainly what the word was on, on the streets of 1313. Uh, don't remind me of that poodoo place. Uh, and maybe as Crass goes, I'll just uh, go to Micah and say, so kid, what am I doing and where? And I think she'll stand up and um, she'll go here. I need um, to move this back over here. And she'll sort of point to this very large case. She goes, just, just help me heft it up. No problem. No problem. You know what you're doing, Ensign? And she smirks at the idea of uh, you be of technically outranking you despite having no con, you know, no real space bearing. Uh, spaceship professionalism at all and i imagine this is very much the you know the the ensign the trainee is literally telling lishbeck fen the uh full wood crew member supposedly uh exactly where to do every like screw bolt spanner etc uh and maybe she at thinks one point, you're quizzing her yeah yeah and i'm just like cool yeah and tell me ensign uh which <laughs> hydro spanner do we need for this particular one uh, and then the one time that she actually just reached for the tool without you prompting it, uh, you know, so she covers it with her body. And then, you know, maybe there's a glint of something being hidden away in the panel there as she uh, <laughs> moves across. Excellent. Yeah. But yeah. Nice. Good. I like the idea of Lishbeck working with Maka Jin there. So, oh, sorry. Sure. So, so one thing though is 
one of the things is Makachin is completely like has no knowledge of any of this rebel stuff, like none whatsoever. So she sort of kind of assistantly asks you, so so what's the 1313? 1313? Well, trust me, kid. If you ever end up there, go up as fast as possible and don't look back. 1313 is, well, more notorious hive of scum and villainy there isn't on this side of the galaxy. A lot of hive of scum and villainy here, I've heard. Imagine a bright center of the universe and then imagine the rotten, deep, dark core of that bright center. And that's 1313. Imperial capital. It's the lowest levels. It's underneath everybody. It's where the huts rule. Oh. It's where my uncle has a clinic. Had the clinic, I guess. I don't know. I haven't seen him in a while. Hmm. But yeah, anyone who's worked 1313, Crass, They've done some bad things. But you knew it. Yeah. She smiles. <laughs> Just leaves it at that. <laughs> yeah. I think she opens a drawer and there's all the knives that she's pulled out of the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I was missing that. Thank you. <laughs> My favorite vibroblade. Uh, and, and after grabbing the vibroblade mako one of the engine alarms starts to, it's the one that's been twitchy you found a patch for it but it looks like the patch may have failed um uh, and loudspeaker comes on janella it's about time for you to throw the ship into hyperspace so this is i don't know do you like going through the pre pre hyperspace checks that captain ari Put in a bulleted list right by no i'm not console. a navigator i'm a pilot <laughs> like <laughs> i've always been bad at navigation i'm like all right this is what like get me in a dog fight i'm great you know this is that's when it's fun and exciting hyperspace is just all right it's pre-programmed it's not like i do anything so it's do just you have like, an astromech that does that then um do we have anyone a crew that's good at navigation so then oh yeah not, does anybody have that specialty doesn't look like it so we got an astromech <laughs> awesome uh so your astromech informs you you know it's time to make the jump to hyperspace the astrogation calculations okay. are input into the nava computer please inform engineering yeah we'll do b4 nice b4 write it down uh yeah, yeah, so you know, Genella, getting ready for hyperspace, folks. It, it, and I'm like, uh, uh, there's an alarm going off. If you give me a moment, um, and I'm gonna go over and scan the situation, figure out what's wrong here. Dice. Okay. Why don't you scan the situation? Which one, when you want to learn more about the physical environment you're in, roll plus brains. Now, before you you do that. If you want to, uh, in worldwide wrestling terms, get some cheap heat, uh, you can always hit techno babble. Once a scene, you can add techno babble to any move. Describe an action using complex, complicated technical vocabulary from one of your specialties, and then you get to roll with advantage. Which means you get to roll three d six and keep the best of two. Uh, dice. There is even at the bottom of our basic or our move sheet, uh, starting at row forty-eight, the jargon for techno babble from the Starscape sheet. You don't have to. I just wanted to make sure you were aware uh, of the techno babble bonus. The techno, Ooh. the babble bonus. The babble bonus. And on which sheet is it on? The it Starship? is on the moves sheet. Moves. Sorry, all the moves. All the moves are in the move sheet. Oh. She's, yeah, I think she goes, if I can just synchronize the bionic propulsion wave, it should be fine. Its actuator has been a little iffy, just a moment. And uh, you'll see her practically dive towards uh, the panel. Um, All right. Okay. Yeah. Just let me know when you get that done, Maki. Yeah. Yes. What? Maki? Uh, <laughs> okay. So I'm rolling 3d6. 
you are rolling 3d6. Now I'm going to cut back to Janella. Uh, Janella is, I assume there's like a cope. Is there, is this a bridge situation or just pilot co pilot set up in? Uh, it's a pilot co pilot. See, see, like the cockpit is on that little, it's that front of the thing jutting out on the left side of the ship. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. So, oh, over the comms. Uh, yeah. Sarlacc, this is uh, Space War Triton Vespa. Those IDents you threw, they're not coming through. In fact, they did come through with a bit of a flag. Uh, we, we need you to, I'm sorry, but uh, Commander Argal is asking that you circle back around to Space War Triton Vespa. We've got you cleared to land again. Docking Bay 36. Uh, I'm turning on the lights. You could just follow that right back. Yeah, yeah. We're we're having a bit of engine trouble with the bionic pulse generator. So, you know, we're let's fix this up. We don't want to blow up in your port. Obviously, that'd be bad, right? You wouldn't want Ooh, that. You, sounds like you're trying to talk. Uh, maybe you're not trying to connect. You're just trying to influence somebody. When you try to get an yeah. NPC to do something out of the ordinary, roll plus heart to persuade them or courage to command them. Uh, do I get a choice? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, I mean, yeah, I think I'll try. Yeah. I'll, I'll go with courage. I'm like, yeah, that would be your, your bosses would hate you if we blew up in your port, right? Like you don't want that pressure on you. So I'm sitting on twenty thousand pounds of thingy. We got to get out of here, man. <laughs> we're gonna deal with this first, then we'll be able to cycle back. You know, make sure everything's safe. Do you understand that? Nice. Roll with courage. All right. Uh, do I get the techno babble bonus? Um, it's once per scene. Yeah, so, I didn't use it. Hold on, that's a fair question. So. Once a scene, that's a good question. Can't does is it once you a scene per PC add. or once per scene a person can? Well, we'll, says, we'll say yes for now. Um, because it says you can add so, uh, so it's 3d6, keep the highest, right? Mm-hmm. Plus two. What was the other stuff? What are the Okay, I don't have a specialty with any of this, so don't have to worry about that. And they add plus one. That's a okay. Another. Nope. I want plus two, not minus. So it looks like an eleven and two. Wow, plus two. Um, that's a super. Uh, that's a super success. Not that that's a technical term in this game, but I just termed it super success. Good job. I do what I want. Uh, there's, Back off. There's, there's a pause, and then. Oh, I. All right. Yes. Uh, I'll get clearance. That's fine. Uh, we'll work on this but uh, we do need you to circle back of course of, of, um but don't want you to blow up the hangar <laughs> yeah i mean especially with what like we're transporting god knows what could happen oh shit things are getting crazy gotta go now we cut to maka jin trying to hey maki uh hurry up with that we gotta get out of here <laughs> I'm hurrying. Now, does your skill add a plus one to things? If you have a, yeah, like engineering? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Specialties add plus one to rolls. Okay, great. Then I got a 10. Nice. So with scan a situation on a 10 plus, you get to ask three questions. All right. Uh, but no holds. Okay. Uh, so um, let's see here. Uh All right, so I guess uh, <laughs> uh, is what we're looking for here. Is this the actual problem that's going on? I guess is the first. What thing. a weird question. I know it's it is plus things. 
Yeah, this I thought that the scan of situation would give me pluses, not just information. So that was me being goofy, but let's No, 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 it's play test. It's, yeah. it's fine. So uh so I'll say is what we're looking for here. Uh it seems like that has a certain connotation, but for this specific thing, maybe do you have the tools you need to fix this? I'll say mm -hmm. yes. Um you've got a hydra spanner and a will, you can fix it. That is such an un inspiring answer though because you don't get a plus one you yep. just you you realize that what has happened is um this thing was a little on the twitch but it it seems like a part has failed that you the last time you checked it was in perfect working order okay oh so okay so what does this mean that it isn't anymore that's a good question. What's going on that this thing keeps on? Yeah. Uh, this, something about this seems fishy. Uh, a couple things were adjusted that you didn't touch. Get the feeling somebody may have sabotaged the this engine. Um, okay. And I think I, I will probably say that out loud. Like, someone's sabotaging us? Someone made adjustments to this. Like she's just talking out loud, if that makes and any Lishbik, sense. And uh, Lishbeck, you would hear that. Uh, Lishbeck goes very cold uh, and you, you know, hand drops down to uh, what looks like the handle of a hydro spanner on a belt, but is maybe something much sharper. Okay. All right. And I guess what can I do to get this fixed right now? Oh, so, yeah. So you have the pieces you need to patch this thing up. It won't be a permanent fix. There are a couple of parts you really need to replace. But I think if you if you prove your worth here, you'll be able to pull it off. Okay. Does that seem right, fair? Then. Yeah, that seems more than fair. And I think I have a move related to prove my worth, but I don't Ooh, know. Do you? Yeah. Um, pretty sure I get to roll heart or something like that. So well, uh, save the lead characters. When you roll prove your worth to save another PC's life, sure, everybody. All of our lives. Use heart instead of courage. Take a plus one if you have the generous condition marked. I do. But you do. Oh my have goodness. The skill. So I guess, plus three. All right. Well, watch me, watch me do great. Okay, but I'm rolling 2d6. Okay, so 2d6 and any three. Oh, I rolled the three. If there was <laughs> someone else rolling it, I could fix that. Yes. Oh, I love this. So this is one of the things that I, I was talking with Undish earlier. Assist. When a crewmate performs or rolls badly, you can offer help. If they if they accept, you describe how you help and you roll a d6. That result replaces the lowest die in their original roll, regardless of if it makes it better or worse, which I think is fun. Yes. Uh, well, I'm there. I could assist. Yeah, you um, hydro spanner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I could just like Maybe you're like straining at something that won't move, right? And then Lishbeck just like grabs hold of it and then like puts a foot on something and then wrenches it back. And let's see what happens. Yes. That's the hydro spanner or not. That's a four. That's better. That gives me okay. four plus six is a seven, right? Yeah, four I mean, plus four, two five, plus three. Six plus three. So that's yep. five plus four, nine. So fantastic. So uh, that was a nice little example of help there. On a oh, let me see, uh, 10 plus on a seven to nine, you succeed, but with some difficulty. Uh, also, when you assist, uh, good or bad, the helper now shares in the final outcome. So you get a it sounds like you get a choice, it doesn't it isn't clear if if the choice is for you or for me to make, but we'll say it's for you. You're injured or emotionally shaken, take minus one trust. And Anish, I think you're right that trust seems to be a little hit point oriented as well so you can take minus one trust you put a crewmate in a bad position their next role is with disadvantage or you damage or destroy something important mark one damage box on the ship 
I think I'm shaken because I thought I was knew knew what I was doing, and and then it completely went like everything froze up. And I, if Lisbeth hadn't been here, I would have been a horrible thing. So I take a minus one for myself, if that makes and, any sense. And then Lisbeth, you also get to make a choice. I mean, I dam definitely damaged something important uh, by just brute forcing. The, uh, I think whatever we were using the hydro spanner on uh, does lock into place, but then breaks off at the, at the end, you know, like it's overcranked kind of thing. So we'll mark one damage box on the ship, I guess. Yes. Uh, I think it would make sense for, um, for navigation, perhaps. No, you know what, for uh, the end, we were fixing the engines, weren't we? So it mm -hmm. makes sense for the engines to be damaged, not inoperable, but uh, right. damaged. damaged by it. Yeah. Uh, you know, until we fix that, um, that uh, hydro flux valve, uh, it's going to be locked shut, which is going to cause extra stress and tension upon uh, the, uh, the, the fuel lines, you know? So basically, like, they're stuck at a storm pressure they shouldn't be. It's going to affect our ship. Sounds great. Yeah, but at least it didn't blow up. You know? it didn't blow up. The ship lists a little bit, and then boom, you jump into hyperspace, and you guys are headed towards Junction. I think this is where, because I want to do a little bit of first game feedback, this is where we will bring the session to a close. There is an end of session move. So I'm sorry, first of all, for not giving Janella hardly anything to do. Sorry about that, Joe. Uh, that was that was not my plan. I was hoping to have a little bit more in the in the cockpit going on. Uh, so you resolve the personal directives from this session. I don't think I pushed on you guys to do that one. So sorry if you didn't actually fill that out. But let's check them out. Uh, let's check our personal directives, which is on row 46 and no i didn't ask anybody to fill one out so we don't have any sorry we will do it next time for sure uh and then we already did trust based off our things so set your personal directives for oh when you lower trust you need to move a favorable uh, condition to detrimental thank you for that reminder uh so uh, set your personal directives for next session. That is on row 45. It's a goal you set at the end of each session that involves interaction with another PC. Where am I recording that? Uh, it is on row 46 of the character keeper. So it would oh, be AY46 for you. I know that it is a hundred rows of stuff, so I apologize that it's hard to Worries. find some of the bits. Uh, I'm going to set my personal directive as um, find the saboteur with Maka's help. I'll find the saboteur that Maka identified. Ooh. I like that. I'm going to prove myself to Fen. They were here. They witnessed my my mistake. Terrible thing that I hadn't fixed well enough. Now. Now oh, you've got to. Was it sabotage or was it just me sabotaging it? <laughs> I know. It was that was sabotaging. Why didn't <laughs> I catch your it? Notes. <laughs> I know that it was that way. I know. That's great. Okay, cool. Uh, then what is Krosh's personal directive for next time? I picked uh, try to enlist Janela in the training class. I think she has experience. She she could maybe be a good example to the other one. I picked, or maybe she just needs training. I picked fight with or alongside cross. Oh, uh, cool. Question: Do the personal directives have any mechanical weight to them? They do at the end of session. So right. at the end of session. Uh, the result is based on the other character involved in the interaction. If the other character says it was a positive interaction, you would earn one trust. If the other character had a negative or a neutral reaction, you mark XP. Okay. 
uh anders i'm not here next week oh, oh okay okay so thank you for that um, yeah that's why I like this is important i'm like Keep that in mind for the future, but yeah, like it will not come up if you, you may want to set that. a different personal directive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll try to figure something. Um, I mean, I'd like to do something with Lish back then, since I've had a, a, a spin at least with with Macajin, but I'm not I mean, sure what would be the training thing could work. So I'm like, look, you're really annoyed at her, and you want to like beat her up in training. <laughs> Prove to Lish Beck that your fangs are still sharp. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. Ooh. That's broad enough that it could be like you know ripping the saboteur limb from limb or whatever, right? Like, good stuff. Cool. Uh, that ends the mechanical part. Let's do our stars and wishes. I gotta stick B four in our NPCs and go find a uh, astromech droid pick. Because uh, by the way, I love love. Even though B four also makes me think of like. Uh, Clone Wars era droids. I still like it. You know what? It could totally be a Clone Wars era droid that just has had a you know astro yeah, it just, it, it just keeps getting like no, we like the shell a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like the shell. We we'll just oh keep gosh. upgrading the inside. <laughs> I'm into that. Yes. Oh, oh, that that makes me very happy because I have some great picks of uh, of various droids. Sorry, focus, focus, Rich, focus. Uh, we'll start with wishes so that we can end with stars. Uh, knowing that uh, Jaleen will not be joining us next week, that is, I'll steal that wish. Gosh, I wish you could be here, but the you know, uh, also I wish that Paul's able to join us. Hopefully, that will come true. There are my wishes. Uh, who'd like to go first with wishes? Um, I, I wish that I were faster at getting the pieces of these moves working together. I feel like I'm slow everyone down whenever I get to having hit the mechanics here. So I'm going to study up a little bit before next week. Okay. I hear what you're saying, but I didn't notice any, like it wasn't like, oh no, <laughs> it was more, I felt everybody it. was I looking through a hundred rows worth of stuff. <laughs> so I, I hear what you're saying and I'm not going to talk you out of it, but I didn't, I didn't feel that there was anything extraneous. So. Uh, that is very cool. gracious of you. That's also accurate. So, you know, a little bit of both. Cool. Thank you, Sherry. All right. Who'd like to go next with wishes? Um, I would like to uh, move towards and opening up some of these confront uh, things. Uh, and I think maybe playing up the dynamic of like uh, the rebel mission versus like the safety of the crew or, you know, like risking people, that kind of thing. Because I, I just think it'd be very easy for us to slip into the, like, well, the rebels are the good guys. So we're all behind that thing right but uh my confront is insults your cause questions your morality hold your past against you so i'm foreseeing uh telling makajin about my past and the true mission that they've signed up for without knowing and i'd like to have some sort of tension around all of that with all of the characters you know like mm -hmm. uh, rather than everybody be up for like the rebel mission kind of thing I also am interested in exploring that conflict, so I, I appreciate that that's a wish that you have. Uh, and that's your Jolene. I mean, uh, I look forward to, I don't know, like interacting more with the, the crew. <laughs> uh, yep. Like, because Lyshek and I already have a, like, you know, a tension of sorts so you know further compounding on expanding on that exploring that absolutely anish what wishes did you have well kind of uh, selfishly i want to get into a fight <laughs> uh but uh, yeah also um 
and just a uh, wish for myself to to read up a little bit before next session because there there is a lot going on here and i forget things uh, all the time everything that felt like yeah this is obviously a core move because this is how pbta generally works it just and we talked a lot about trust so i feel like that uh, i have a reasonable grasp of that but everything else is is uh, kind of up in the air Understandable. I am also getting my my feet under me on this one, so don't feel bad. Cool. You went last with wishes. You get to go first with stars. Do you have any stars? And also, if you can give any stars towards like Starscape things, first impressions that that would be helpful for me for feedback for the game. Yeah, I'll start with that. Um, from what I've seen, the playbooks are extremely flavorful and really nail the, the archetype. So that, that's really good. Um, I think the, the mechanics from what I've seen work really well for the, for the source material. Uh, we'll see how well it works for, for Star Wars. I'm, I'm a little bit iffy on parts of it. Partly, mostly the techno babble, I think, is. is um, I think you'd need to maybe twist it a little bit to make it work perfectly for, for Star mm -hmm. Wars. But, that's fair. Uh, yeah. I, th I think that's a um, fair concern. Yeah, but, but otherwise, in, if you're playing Star Trek, it's perfect. Uh, then that's exactly, uh, that's, uh, there it's uh, exactly right, uh, I think. Um, to the players, um, I really like Lishbeck and Maka uh, working on the engine and, and Lishbeck being sneaky and, and <laughs> Maka being kind of like uh, open and not, not innocent exactly, but like kind of uh, not deceptive, I guess. Um, uh, and uh, Janela, I really like the, the, um, uh, the flashback scene with the <laughs> Waking up with the with the uh, rocket um, rocket team that was uh, that was a very it felt like what what I've seen of the character that was very very appropriate so I really like uh, and rich for for juggling all of these uh, <laughs> all of these things that that are are new and, and kind of uh, kind of weird sometimes. Thank you, uh, Jolene. Do you have any stars? I mean, I think character, like for as much as stuff as there is, character creation went pretty well. Um, I I, I really enjoyed the scene between Lushback and Cross and Lushback and uh, Maka. So yeah, great great work, y'all. Awesome. Uh, Will your your voice you? modulator is always fun. So. Yay! I'm glad that it doesn't annoy people because I I still adore it. It's the best thirty bucks I've ever spent on mm. RPGs. Uh, my stars would be for uh, returning characters all around. All around the new character that we've got that fits perfectly in as a new character. Um, the the world of SWS is always fun to come back in and see all the different threads. Uh, speaking as someone who, much like Rich, uh, really enjoys all of the comic booky kind of like, oh, that's that guy from that one, like kind of thing, <laughs> you know. Um, I really geek out on it. Um, and uh, I really enjoyed all of our interaction. I think the dynamics work. I think Janella as, um, you know, I think that's the thing that you have to do with uh, like with, with all of these games with the pilot is you got to. They do often end up in a cockpit doing things separate from the rest of it. And that'd be one of my wishes for the series overall would be to find ways to make that shine and then take a step back from the narrative so that there is space for them to then leave the cockpit and rejoin us, right? Because I think that RPGs, we often tend to get locked into moment by moment because it's dramatic. But when you look at TV and other fiction, right? A thing happens and then we don't really obsess over how much time happens between them and where the camera moves to next. It gives an opportunity for everyone to go around. But because RPGs are this like, and what is it you do function it's often you know you get bogged down in it uh but yeah um i i quite like the look of starscape and i like all this trust thing i think that we've done a good job of framing it in a way that it could work well for star wars i'd be 
super interested almost to do like a New Republic Ranger type type series with Starscape in this setting where you are part of a military organization, you are part of a thing, maybe like policing the lawless outer rim or something like that, you know? Um, that might be a more frictionless version of the game, you mm-hmm. know? Because it, it's totally Star Trek, like, and the techno babble works, but I mean, everybody in Star Wars knows the techno babble, right? That's the thing, because Star Wars is a world where everybody is like able to fix their car, whereas Star Trek is a world where only the Starfleet engineer can fix your spaceship, kind of thing. Um, That's true. Yeah. But yeah, um, I'm looking forward to more, for sure. Thanks, Will. Uh, Sherry. As always with the Gauntlet game, I fall in love with all the characters, right? It's character creation. Um, it's just a lot of fun. I was glad to see the selection of NPCs you put out there because there were some that I was familiar with. And um, and that's always kind of nice for me because I do jump in less regularly than, than the rest of the crew here. So, um, and I, I don't know, it's such a welcoming world and the system was fun to go through. It was a really pleasant puzzly character creation it felt like working together making the characters was fruitful and um and it like built backstory as we were going through it so that's exactly what you want in those moments for sure cool thank you all so much for uh giving this a go i look forward to subsequent sessions uh, adding a new person and then welcoming you back with open arms julie when you come back in a couple weeks and with that we will bring this session to a close thanks everybody